Hello, my name is Raj Bala. I am pursuing PhD under the guidance of Professor Girish Kumar. I am also one of the TAs for this course and I will take few lectures on waveguides. The outline to cover this topic will be first I will start fundamentals of waveguides, then I will discuss parallel plane waveguide, after that I will discuss rectangular waveguide and then I will discuss the applications of waveguides. So let us begin with basics of waveguides. The waveguides as the name suggests that it is a structure which can be used to guide electromagnetic waves along it. There are other structures also which can guide electromagnetic waves such as transmission lines and coaxial cables, but there are some differences between these structures and waveguides and the first difference is that at microwave frequencies the transmission lines and the coaxial cables become inefficient due to dielectric losses and conductor losses or we can say due to skin effect whereas waveguides can be used at microwave frequencies and they can provide larger bandwidth with lower attenuation or lower losses. And the second difference is that the transmission lines can work from a DC or a zero frequency to a certain high frequency that means it acts as a low pass filter whereas waveguides can be operated above a certain frequency called as cutoff frequency uh, so it acts as a high pass filter. And the third difference is that the transmission line can support only TEM mode of propagation whereas waveguides can support many field configurations called as modes which we will discuss later. So these are the differences between transmission lines and uh, waveguides. Generally waveguides are made from high conductivity metals such as copper, aluminium, brass etc. And these waveguides can be of any shape but in general the rectangular and circular waveguides are used. So uh, to analyze rectangular waveguide first we will develop some concepts for a simple waveguiding structure that is parallel plane waveguide and after that we will extend those concepts to rectangular waveguide. So let us begin with parallel plane waveguide. In parallel plane waveguide there are two metallic plates separated by a distance a in x direction and these plates are extended to infinity in y direction and the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave is taken in positive z direction. Now let us see how electromagnetic wave propagate in this parallel plane waveguide. In general to analyze any problem in electromagnetics we need to solve Maxwell's equations. So what are Maxwell's equations? There are four Maxwell's equations which can be written either in differential form or in integral form. The difference between these two forms is that the differential form establishes relationship between the field and the source but they cannot be used at media interfaces where medium properties changes abruptly. In those situations integral form of Maxwell's equations can be used and they will establish relationship between the fields in two different mediums. They are called as boundary conditions. So these are the four Maxwell's equations in differential form or they are also called as Maxwell's equations in point form. The first Maxwell's equation is del dot d is equal to rho which comes from Gauss law and it states that the electric flux leaving from a volume is proportional to the charge enclosed. The second equation is del cross E is equal to minus daba B by daba T which comes from the Faraday's law of induction and it states that the voltage induced is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. And the third equation is del dot B is equal to 0 which comes from Gauss law for magnetism and it states that total flux leaving a closed surface is 0. 
and the fourth and last equation is del cross h is equal to j plus daba d by daba t where j is conduction current density and daba d by daba t is displacement current density. So these are four Maxwell's equations. However, for waveguides, this j term in the last equation will be zero as we assume that the waveguide is filled with a source free lossless dielectric material. So this j will be zero and the last equation will reduce to del cross h is equal to daba d by daba t. In general, in waveguides we consider the direction of propagation in z direction and the field present in the direction of propagation are called as longitudinal fields. So the longitudinal fields will be ez and hz and the fields which are perpendicular or transverse to the direction of propagation are called as transverse fields. So transverse fields will be hx, hy, ex and ey. We can derive these transverse field in terms of longitudinal fields ez and hz by solving these two Maxwell's equations del cross e is equal to minus daba b by daba t and del cross h is equal to daba d by daba t. We can consider these two equation in frequency domain which is del cross e is equal to minus j omega mu h and del cross h is equal to minus j omega epsilon e. So by solving these two equation we can get the transverse fields hx, hy, ex, ey. These are the transverse fields and in these transverse fields the constant gamma is a propagation constant which is equal to alpha plus j beta where alpha is attenuation constant and beta is phase constant and this k is equal to omega root mu epsilon and h square is equal to gamma square plus k square. To derive uh, transverse fields we need to know the longitudinal fields. Let us say, so let us see how longitudinal fields ez and hz can be found. These fields ez and hz can be found using wave equation and the wave equation for electric field is del square e plus omega square mu epsilon is equal to 0 and it is del square h plus omega square mu epsilon h is equal to 0 for magnetic field. Since electric field and magnetic field has three components ex, ey, ez and hx, hy and hz. So there will be six scalar equations and these equations are also called as Helmholtz equation. So to find ez and hz we need to solve these equation in the direction of propagation. So we will solve these two equation daba square ez by daba x square plus daba square ez by daba y square plus daba square ez by daba z square is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon ez. So we will solve this equation and we can get ez. Similarly if we solve this equation for magnetic field then we can get magnetic field in z direction. Now let us see how these longitudinal fields are derived using these wave equations in parallel plane waveguide. So in parallel plane waveguide as we discussed that the plates are extended to infinity in the direction y. So the field will be constant in y direction and there will not be any change in the fields. So we can take daba by daba y is equal to 0. By putting this thing in the wave equation we will get daba square ez by daba x square plus daba square ez by daba z square is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon ez. Since ez is varying along x and z only and it is constant along y, so we can consider ez is equal to function of x into function of z. Now put this function in this equation, so we will get z into double derivative of x plus x into double derivative of z is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon xz. Now divide this whole equation with x into z then we will get double derivative of x divided by x plus double derivative of z divided by z is equal to minus k square where k square is equal to omega square mu epsilon this is a constant where k is a wave number. 
since this k square is a constant and these variables are independent variables so these two terms should be a constant so we can take double derivative of x divided by x is equal to minus kx square and double derivative of z divided by z is equal to minus beta square or we can replace beta with gamma square if we take alpha equal to 0 in gamma then this will become minus beta square so this negative sign for these constant is taken for the propagating wave and if we take positive sign then the solution of this differential equation will be exponential function now equate this minus kx square to double derivative of x divided by x then we will get this differential equation double derivative of x plus kx square into x is equal to 0. The solution of this type of uh, differential equation is c1 cos function plus c2 sin function. So, x will be c1 cos kx into x plus c2 sin kx into x. Similarly, we can find z and this will be c3 e raised to gamma z plus c4 e raised to minus gamma z. So, this is how we find x and z. Now, we will put these functions x and z in ez and then we can get the longitudinal field ez which will be c1 cos kx into x plus c2 sin kx into x into c3 e raised to gamma z plus c4 e raised to minus gamma z. In this equation, the term e raised to gamma z represents the wave propagating in negative z direction and the term e raised to minus gamma z represents the wave propagating in positive z direction. Since we have considered the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave in positive z direction, so this term should be 0, so C3 will be 0. Now put C3 equal to 0 here and then Ez reduces to C1 into C4 cos kx into x plus C2 into C4 sin kx into x into e raised to minus gamma z or we can write it as a1 cos kx into x plus a2 sin kx into x into e raised to minus gamma z. So, this is how longitudinal electric field is derived using wave equations. Similarly, we can derive magnetic field also. So, that will be b1 cos kx into x plus b2 sin kx into x into e raised to minus gamma z. Now, by using these two equations, we can derive the transverse fields hx, hy, ex and ey. So, the equations for these transverse fields will be like this and you can verify these uh, by putting daba by daba y is equal to 0 in the equations we have seen earlier. This is how all the field components are derived in a parallel plane waveguide. Now, let us see how different modes propagate in a parallel plane waveguide. First, let us see the TEM mode of propagation. TEM mode is a transverse electric and magnetic mode in which electric field and magnetic fields are transverse to the direction of propagation or there is no electric and magnetic field in the direction of propagation. That means, HZ is equal to 0 and EZ is equal to 0. Now, by putting these values in the transverse field equations, we can find the transverse fields. By putting S z equal to 0 and E z equal to 0, we will get E x is equal to 0, E y is equal to 0 and H x equal to 0 and H y equal to 0. It means all the field components are 0 in a parallel plane waveguide in TEM mode. If there is no field, then propagation of electromagnetic wave will not take place or we can say parallel plane waveguide cannot support TEM mode of propagation. Now, let us see the next mode which is TM mode transverse magnetic mode in which magnetic field is transverse to the direction of propagation and there is no magnetic field in the direction of propagation. So, HZ is equal to 0 and EZ is not equal to 0 and the general solution for electric field in the longitudinal direction will be E z equal to a 1 cos k x into x plus a 2 sin k x into x into e raise to minus gamma z as we discussed earlier. 
Now we need to apply boundary conditions on the electric field. So, what are the boundary conditions? The answer is that the tangential component of the electric field should be 0 at the conducting boundary. In the parallel plane waveguide, the conducting plates are at x equal to 0 and x equal to a and the tangential field is ez. So, at x equal to 0 and x equal to a, ez should be 0. So, put x equal to 0 here, we will get a1 cos 0 plus a2 sin 0, sin 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1. So, we will get a1 e raise to minus gamma z. Now, equate this to 0, then we will get a1 equal to 0. Now, put a1 equal to 0 in this equation, then e z reduces to e naught sin k x into x e raise to minus gamma z. Now, apply the second boundary condition which is at x equal to a e z equal to 0. So, if you put x equal to a here, then it will become e naught sin k x into a e raise to minus gamma z and if you equate it to 0 then e naught cannot be 0 this cannot become 0 so sin function has to be 0 so sin k x into a is 0 which implies k x into a should be multiple of pi so k x into a is equal to m pi where m is a integer from here k x is m pi by a now put this value of k x in this equation so, the longitudinal electric field will be E z is equal to E naught sin m pi by a x into E raise to minus gamma z. So, this is how the longitudinal electric field is uh, derived. Now, let us see the propagating and non-propagating modes in T m propagation. So, we have H z equal to 0, E z equal to E naught sin m pi by a x into e raise to minus gamma z. By using these two, we can find e x, e y, h y, h x. So, e x is this thing, e y is 0, h y is this and h x is 0. Now, if we put m equal to 0 in these field equations, then that will become t m 0 mode. h z is already 0. Now, put m equal to 0 in e z, then it will become sin 0 and sin 0 is 0. So, e z is also 0. Then put m equal to 0 here. So, 0 into something will be 0. So, e x is 0. e y is already 0. And h y if we put m equal to 0 then h y will become 0 and h x is already 0. It means all the field components are 0. So, there will not be any wave propagation. So, this mode is same as the T e m mode because E z and H z both are 0 in this mode. Now, if we put m equal to 1 or more than 1, then E z, E x and H y will not be 0. So, there will be propagation of electromagnetic wave in these modes. So, example of propagating modes are T m 1, T m 2, T m 3 like this. Now, let us see how field varies in these propagating modes. So, take an example of T m 1 mode and let us see how field varies in T m 1 mode. In transverse magnetic modes, there is only one component of magnetic field which is in y direction whereas, there are uh, two components of electric fields which are E x and E z. All of these three components are constant in the direction y and they are varying along x and z only. So, we will see the variation of the fields in x z plane only. So, let us first see the variation of magnetic field in x z plane. So, in this, this is the x axis, this is the z direction and y direction is normal to this plane outward and the dots in the circle represents the positive y direction and cross in the circle represents the negative y direction and the size of the circle represent the amplitude of the fields. So, larger the size of the circle, higher will be the amplitude of the fields. Now, let us see variation of uh, magnetic field along x direction. So, h y is varying as cos function along x direction at x equal to 0 this will be cos 0 
which is maximum so at x equal to 0 h y will be maximum and if we put x equal to a here then this will be cos pi which is minus 1 so at x equal to a there will be a maximum in opposite direction and if we put x equal to a by 2 then this will be cos pi by 2 which is equal to 0 so h y will have 0 at x is equal to a by 2. So, the magnetic field is maximum at x equal to 0 and x equal to a and it is 0 at x equal to a by 2. As you can see from this figure, it is maximum here, maximum here, 0 here. Now, let us see the variation of magnetic field in z direction. So, it is varying as e raised to minus j 2 pi by lambda into z in z direction and this function is a periodic function with period 2 pi and it will be maximum at z is equal to 0, z equal to lambda by 2 and z equal to multiple of lambda by 2 and it will be minimum at z equal to lambda by 4, z equal to 3 lambda by 4 and odd multiple of lambda by 4. So, h y will be maximum at z equal to 0, z equal to lambda by 2, z equal to multiple of lambda by 2 and it will be 0 at z equal to lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4 and odd multiple of lambda by 4. So, this is how uh, magnetic field varies in uh, T m 1 mode. So, there is a half sinusoidal variation of magnetic field in the x direction. Now, let us see the variation of electric field in x z plane. So, in this the direction of arrow shows the direction of field and the length of the line represents the amplitude of the fields. So, larger the length of the line the higher will be the amplitude of the field. Since we have two component of electric field, so the resultant electric field will be vector sum of E x and E z. Now, let us see the variation of these two in x direction. So, E x varies as cos function along x and E z varies as sin function along x. That means, these two components are in phase quadrature along x direction or we can say when E x is maximum then E z will be 0 and when E x is 0 then E z will be maximum. As you can see from this also. So, at x equal to 0 E x is maximum and there is no field component in z direction. So, E z is 0. Similarly, at x equal to a E x is maximum and there is no field component in z direction. So, E z is 0. So, this is how electric field varies along x direction and in z direction these two fields are staggered by a length of lambda by 4 because of this factor there will be a 90 degree phase delay. So, when E x is maximum then E z will be 0 along z direction and when E x is 0 then E z will be maximum along z direction. You can see from this figure also. So, at z equal to 0 E x is maximum and E z is 0 and at z equal to lambda by 4 E z is maximum and E x is 0 and at z equal to lambda by 2 E x is maximum and E z is 0. So, this is how electric and magnetic field vary in x z plane in T m 1 mode. There is a half sinusoidal variation of the fields in the x direction or in the direction in which the wave is confined. So, this is all about the T m 1 mode. Now, let us move on to the next mode which is T e mode transverse electric mode in which the electric field is transverse to the direction of propagation or there is no electric field in the direction of propagation or we can say E z is equal to 0 and H z is not equal to 0. The general solution for magnetic field in longitudinal directional will be H z is equal to B 1 cos k x into x plus B 2 sin k x into x into e raise to minus gamma z which we derived earlier. Now, we need to apply boundary conditions for this and the boundary conditions are 
the tangential component of the electric field should be 0 at the conducting boundary. So, conducting boundary is at x equal to 0 and x equal to a and the tangential fields are E y and E z. E z is already 0, so we need to make E y equal to 0 and to make E y equal to 0, we need to find E y first. So, we can find E y in terms of H z like this. So, E y will be j omega mu by h square into daba H z by daba x. So, if E y equal to 0, then daba H z by daba x will be 0. So, put x equal to 0 and make daba H z by daba x equal to 0, then we will get B2 equal to 0. And the magnetic field reduces to H z is equal to H naught cos k x into x e raise to minus gamma z. Now, apply the second boundary condition which is at x equal to a E y equal to 0 or at x equal to a daba H z by daba x equal to 0. By applying this condition, we will get sin k x into x is equal to 0, which means k x is equal to m pi by a. Now, put this value in this equation. So, we will get the longitudinal magnetic field H z is equal to H naught into cos m pi by a into x e raise to minus gamma z. Now, let us see uh, propagating and non-propagating modes in uh, T e propagation. So, we have E z equal to 0 and H z is equal to this H naught into cos m pi by a x into e raise to minus gamma z. From here, we can find the transverse fields. So, E x is equal to 0, E y is equal to this, H x equal to this and H y equal to 0. Now, if we put m equal to 0 in these field equations, then this will become T e 0 mode. In this E z is already 0 and by putting m equal to 0, H z will be H naught into e raise to minus gamma z which is not equal to 0. E x is already 0, E y will be 0 into something 0, H x will be 0 into something 0 and H y is already 0. So, all the transverse field components are 0. So, there will not be any wave propagation in T e 0 mode. So, for a T e propagation non propagating mode is T e 0. Now, if we put m equal to 1 or greater than 1, then this h z, e y and h x will not be 0. So, there will be wave propagation in T e m mode. So, the propagating modes in T e propagation are T e m mode such as T e 1, T e 2, T e 3 like this. Now, let us see how field varies in T e modes. So, let us take an example of T e 2 mode. This is the electric field variation in T e 2 mode. This is the magnetic field variation in T e 2 mode. So, in the uh, transverse electric mode, there is only one component of electric field which is in y direction and there are two components of magnetic fields which are in x direction and z direction h x and h z and all of these three components are constant along y direction and they vary along x and z only. So, we will see the variation of field in x z plane only. So, let us first see the variation of electric field. So, this is x direction, this is z direction and y direction is normal to this plane outward and the dots in this circle represent the positive direction cross represent the negative y direction and the size of the circle represent the amplitude of the field. So, E y is varying sinusoidally along x direction. So, if we put x equal to 0, then it will be sin 0. So, we will get 0 field at x equal to 0. If we put x equal to a, then we will get sin 2 pi which is also 0. So, this will be 0 and if we put x equal to a by 2 then sin pi this will also be 0. So, electric field is 0 at x equal to 0, x equal to a by 2 and x equal to a and the maxima will be at x equal to a by 4 and at x equal to 3 a by 4. So, there is a 2 half sinusoidal variation of 
electric field in x direction. Now let us see variation of electric field in z direction. It will be 0 at z equal to 0, z equal to lambda by 2, z equal to lambda and z equal to multiple of lambda by 2. Whereas it will be maximum at z equal to lambda by 4, z equal to 3 lambda by 4 and z equal to odd multiple of lambda by 4. So, this is how electric field varies in xz plane for Te2 mode. Now, let us see the variation of magnetic field in Te2 mode. So, there are two magnetic fields and the resultant magnetic field will be the vector sum of hx and hz. hx is varying sinusoidally along x direction and hz is varying cosinusoidally along x direction. It means these two components are in phase quadrature along x direction or we can say when hx is maximum then hz will be minimum or 0 and when hx is 0 then hz will be maximum which we can see from this figure also. At x equal to 0 hz is maximum and there is no field along x direction so hx is 0. At this point also x equal to a by 2 hz is maximum and hx is 0 at this point also hx is 0 and hz is maximum. So, hz is maximum at x equal to 0, x equal to a by 2 and x equal to a whereas it is minimum at x equal to a by 4 and x equal to 3a by 4. So, there is a two half sinusoidal variation of the fields along x direction. Now, let us see the variation of these fields in z direction. These two components hx and hz are staggered by a length of lambda by 4 because of this factor j beta there will be 90 degree phase delay. So, these two components are 90 degree out of phase. So, if hx is maximum then hz will be 0 along z direction and if hx is 0 then hz will be maximum along z direction. So, if we will see in z direction then hz is maximum at z equal to 0, z equal to lambda by 2, z equal to lambda, z equal to multiple of lambda by 2. Whereas, hx will be 0 at these points z equal to 0, z equal to lambda by 2, z equal to lambda like this. Similarly, hz will be 0 at z equal to lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4 and odd multiple of lambda by 4 and at these points hx will be uh, maxima. So, hx is maxima at z equal to lambda by 4, z equal to 3 lambda by 4 and odd multiple of lambda by 4. So, this is how electric and magnetic fields vary in Te2 mode in parallel plane waveguide. So, in x direction or in the direction in which the wave is confined the variation of the fields is 2 half sinusoidal or in general if we have TEM mode or TMM mode then the variation of the fields along the direction in which the confinement has been done will be M half sinusoidal. This is all about the fields present in TM and TE modes. In the next lecture, we will discuss the cutoff frequencies for these modes and after that we will start rectangular waveguides. Thank you.